going to stream the Crazy House League. Uh, so I just opened oh, up. Which match? Uh, there are two ma matches, six on against Rapid Variants, which has started. And at the same time, uh, 12 team will be playing the finisher. And I'll kind of go back and forth. So, uh, hello everyone. Um, sorry, yep. So what do you think of the opening? Um, from Rapid Variance. Sixon is doing whatever he can to avoid book. Yes. That explains G6 and E5. Right. So he's probably successfully avoided book. Um, Queen to G6 was actually interesting. So yeah, so the problem with E5, like, like fundamentally, is it, it keeps that diagonal open from F uh, from C4 to F7, and so that's what Rapid Variance tried to exploit. Now he's got a knight on D6, he just moves the bishop back, and so it's going to be very hard for Black to develop the light squared bishop. So that's the that's the problem, as it were, in this position. It is generally a problem for Black in this G6 systems to trade upon. That's why I don't like e5. But like if the foot have a pawn in hand, and black always has to worry about pawn at h6, 3. Yes. But I think white is considerably better of the position. I mean, yeah. I mean, pawn at g7 here works, actually, doesn't it? Uh, no, no, no. Pawn at g7, no, it doesn't. Maybe just rook g8. Yeah, rook g8 and then take. Maybe, maybe g 7 if you want to drop something on g7. Uh, with the point king f8, bishop h6, but then he will go king g8. Yeah. And maybe, and maybe knight f5 then? The no, knight f5 and go drop on g7. Yeah, okay. I mean. Uh, bishop, bishop g5, I don't get. So. No. Go bishop h6 is also a bit interesting. Rook g8. So that was point h6 g7, not h6. Rook g8 takes h6. Yes, takes h6. 95 maybe good now. Yeah, 95 looks good. And, and so, so threatening at e7, trapping the queen. Yes. Also, just improves the knight. Keeps a knight on f6 also. And it comes. Yeah. Let's put in that one. So this game is looking. In okay, so he he runs away with the queen. Uh, maybe knight of g4. <coughs> Get the g7 also. If he doesn't want to calculate, maybe a g4. Just defending the bishop. It's a nice move for lazy people. Knight a c7. Not even sure what he does after knight a c7. The knight a g4. Yasugi played the English. Yeah. Okay. So we'll yeah we'll switch over uh, to the Dasugi game out of interest. We have a yeah an English opening. What is C four E four. Okay. A G three. So it looks like F. Just take on. Take on C seven. Yes. Take on take on C seven or take on G three. No, take on g3, he take takes back the bishop. Then. Yeah. Yes, that's the idea. So it takes c7, let's check. Um, the only problem I have seen with this right is that a lot of moves look good. Yeah, so we're looking at, you're looking at the Jasugi game. So we have c4, uh, e4. Jasugi game. Here's move 5, still too boring to say something. Yeah. Well, maybe there's a slight weakness on d3, but hard to say. 
Okay, so coming back to the other one then. Um, he takes the bishop. Like, everything seemed to be hanging in the position. So even that seems good. Now knight takes c7. Knight takes c7, knight takes... Knight takes rook. Knight takes rook. Or bishop at c5. He does bishop at c5. So what's the idea of that? I'm not sure, I'm not sure if this is good for the uh, big variance or not, but I'm predicting that like, <laughs> all of his moves. Which might just be bad for him. <laughs> Yeah, so what's the idea of bishop c5? It's that he, uh, uh, just keep hitting the task because king takes c7, bishop takes c6, knight takes c7, maybe even. Oh, oh, bishop takes c6, knight takes c7, and he would pick up the queen. He's oh. not even going to open mate. It's just going to make it the queen. Very nice. Seven, knight takes seven, knight Yes. But I can go knight b3 at the end, which is king e2. If he wants to go for mate, maybe there is knight up before. I don't see the mate. Okay, he goes for the queen. Seven. So just turning back to see it. Yeah, it seems to be all over for that one. Uh, turning back to the Jasugi game. Um, okay, bishop takes knight feels dubious. What was the point? Jasugi prepared looking at cards and games. <laughs> looking at what? At games of cards and to just place these things like that. Oh really? Okay, yeah. Um, but so I think... Chess. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Bish takes knight. I didn't expect Bish takes knight. I don't know why. So he must have a... I mean, I'm thinking if you play Bish takes knight, you need to have a use for that knight. Sort of, if you're being very principled about it. But uh, yeah, white well, seems to be okay. Bishop at h5 might be okay for black. Yep. It's definitely good for black if white has to go knight at e1. Yeah. But he can provoke he can provoke the exchange, I'm sure. Uh, so bishop g5 himself now, maybe. But black's getting a lot of bishops. But yeah, I go bishop g5 just to develop. Yes. Sadly, you cannot put like bishop at i6 because it's already outside the board. <laughs> yes. And just quickly looking back, what happened in the game? Um, so, oh, I missed the end of that, but uh, um, Rapid Variance did indeed convert that. So, just to show the mating sequence, so he wins the queen. He throws in a check, black throws in a check, takes the pawn, but now the checks come from white. Check. Uh, I see. So if, if, if black takes the knight, you take bishop takes back with check, and your, your queen is coming in. Okay, queen's coming in, pawn, and black resigns um, after king here. So I can't see the mate directly, but you can just take the rook, I imagine. Uh, hang on, knight d6 is mate, I'm being absolutely silly. Uh, yeah, and queen takes rook was also winning, but... And if he takes, rook takes pawn, then queen at h8 and queen takes g8 is also mate. Okay, so very nice mate. Um, so they slashed again. In game two, and it's... Uh, Okay, so go back. We'll go back to the Jasugi game. Um, oh, so he didn't go bishop g5. He just withdrew his bishop. So it's it's a, it's a quite. I don't understand the, why is the queen in front of the bishop. I'd want to develop that bishop first. Oh, he, it was a take back. Yeah. So queen e3 was obviously a mouse slip of some kind.
Okay, so it's still quite a tense game, the finish. Whereas the rapid advance against Shikshon is already it's already entering sharp territory, well, sharpish territory. Um, with attacks on G2. Um, yeah, so let's go back to the Jasugi game. Um, yeah, so as a mouse slip, I think he wanted to play bishop at e3. No. Uh, bishop at e3, next move. Okay. So I think there was a mouse slip playing queen e3 when he wanted bishop e3. But okay. Defends the pawn. So it's very kind of, this game is very positional. Um, I was expecting h3 to come at some point, but it hasn't done so. And I was expecting this bishop to go to g5, but again, that didn't happen. So this is a really tense, this is a chess game, like both sides are in their own half. Um, and no pieces, no pieces, uh, all the pieces have been put on the board, so it's a chess game. So this protein slides over, thinking he's... It's interesting because the white white king is now on a light square and the light squares uh, all black's pieces are on light squares. I Meaning all black's bishops are on light squares. Maybe h6 is good for black Because if he starts trading pawns at h6 comes and it might be annoying. Um, it looks like they're about to agree a draw. It's like neither side can make any progress here. Agreed draw. <laughs> no, I mean, I think I like black here. But both sides are shuffling as if they don't know what to do. Yes. <laughs> they're going to be improving slowly. And at some point, Yasugi is going to get tired and he's going to make a mess. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Well, finally, the queen is behind the bishop, which is what, how it should be. But why not h3 at some point? That's the thing that's confusing me. Maybe he's not really even threatening the bishop if he plays h3. Maybe like maybe you just another move. Just, h4 and like h4. Yeah. I mean, he's very safe there with King H1 to G1. He doesn't want to watch anything there. Yeah, fair enough. But I don't, what I don't like is that some other pieces have not lost by the knight on E1. By the way, have a look at the time as well. This is a very different, the character of this game is very different because we're still in the op we're still just out of the opening and both sides are on less than two minutes. So it so very soon both sides will be playing effectively on you know on their five second increment. So does this thing sometimes he does go h three positions. Yeah. Like I have some games with him in which we did this, like we just play some completely theoretical spanish or something. When my bishop went to bishop b5, bishop a4, bishop c2, even when we play 15 moves of chess and then we start. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we're not going to have any trades in this game, so let's let's go back to, uh, until they start playing Crazy House, let's have a look back at uh, Zixon against Rapid Variance. Game 2, we saw Rapid Variance take game 1. Um, and this one, lots of pressure on g2, and already Rapid Variance is actually looking really strong. Um, he's got a weakness on the light squares. Ah, okay, nice. Sixon actually fixes the weakness on the light squares with at g2. Um, and things are not so clear now, actually. A rapid variance is actually quite low on time, so quite quite a good fix, actually. It feels like something went wrong for rapid variance there. Like, was knight f6 necessary? Was there any way of continuing the pressure? Maybe not. Because it feels like it feels like it's now white um, starting to pressure black in this position. Okay, getting back to the Jasugi game, it's actually already entering time pressure. Game one, 
and we saw the bishop retreat and now the knight coming to g5 and the finisher is still shuffling <laughs> he really is like i don't know how to improve my position and i'm not going to do anything to make it worse this is amazing i feel like 12 teams slightly improving whereas the finisher is shuffling and uh, now 12 teen is uh, jasugi 99 is working in on those light squares and bishop takes h6 is coming and suddenly white is taking over this oh. game Maybe bishop takes e5 is what's going to be Bishop takes e5. Oh, this one. Yes. Well, I predicted to see you. I predicted, yeah. Okay, maybe I just go back to predicting not the leg moves again because I cannot predict the leg moves. <laughs> yeah. Well, this isn't a prediction game, obviously. It's it's just trying to understand what they're up to. So he wants pawns for the light squares. That's, yeah, that's basically the point. I think black should be fine. You think he should be fine? Okay. The only problem is the yeah. finisher is playing two pieces for a pawn. For three pawns. Yeah. The problem is the finisher is uh, playing uh, on increment. I thought he moved to queen to g7, though. Yeah, he should have put a new piece, maybe. Yes. Because now he moves his knight into the attack. Ah, Oper also agrees with me. So, ah, he says knight. He says bishop, please be fine. We all have different moves there. Okay, I can't see Oper's chat. Uh, I'm in the crazy house channel, but I can't see it. Okay, so it looks like he's winning. The game. Knight takes knight. Oh, 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 oh in the game chat. Yeah, yeah, I see it now. <laughs> okay, so at g7, now he's just winning the queen, if not more. And he just takes the queen. Which So queen at g7 is the threat. No. Yeah, there's no counter. I still believe that black should have been fine. Maybe rook g7. No, I'm, I'm sure you're right. Maybe he just had to drop with g5, g5 yeah. bishop at g7. So yeah, drop with a new piece. Yeah, But it, I think it's just the time pressure. The finisher does get into time pressure sometimes. Uh, so they, they begin game two. In the meantime, uh, just looking back on rapid variance versus Zixon. We're looking from Zixon's perspective, who's white. Uh, there's lots of the chat I'm not seeing. Um, I, I felt Dixon had somehow fixed his weakness on g2 and was coming back into it with his own counterattack. Um, he takes a knight, so the position is starting to look dangerous. Oh. Um, so black doesn't have knights is the only thing. But now he, he takes a knight, so he's, not, he's got knight to check. Knight takes bishop. Okay, so it's suddenly a bishop... So those checks that defend are amazing, and he, he comes and defends, and suddenly white is actually really safe. They're so annoying, those checks. <laughs> um, so now takes, now knight, he's got his own knight check ideas. Knight f5 check. But I feel I feel like six is doing quite nicely. Knight, yeah, he's got his own knight checks now. King has to go to f8. Well, no, this is going to lose the bishop. Yeah, and now white is very, well... It's not all over, but yeah, it's all over. <laughs> it's all he over. Has all the time. Yeah. He has like four extra minutes or so. On this. Yeah. Extra pieces weren't enough. Yeah. So it's even like pawn at d d seven, queen at g eight, for example, as a mating idea. Well, uh, he doesn't have a blocker. He has to go king b eight. Yeah. So king b eight, and then, and then queen. Oh, smothered queen mate. C8. Queen c eight, smothered mate. Ah, oh, very nice. Yes. So he either has to give away the queen or smothered mate. Nice. Uh, queen, yeah, queen at c seven is the only. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Good fight back from Zixon to take. So it's one one. Um, in that match, and back to the finisher. And we, we missed the start of this game. So um, Jasugi is black. What would he play against e4? And the answer is a Scandinavian. With queen e3, knight f6. So what's the theory in here? Uh, 
So it's, usually, it's, it's basically the two queens staring each other down, and we're still in that situation with Jasugi 99 to move. And just to say, in the other match, the Rapid Variance team had already taken the match win for the week, but they just get another uh, another game point. So neither side wants to take the other side's queen because it helps the other side to develop. So it looks like he was afraid of knight g5. But And to be honest, what it what it either ninety five or one at d five. One of those two we would play. But it also makes me think he he was thinking of of he was thinking of um provoking the knight on f three in some way. Like with at g five, that kind of move. <laughs> so he does go at g5, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. oh, well, so, pawn takes knight, the idea is what? If pawn takes knight, pawn takes knight, is that, is that the idea? Yes, that's the idea. Yeah. No, hang on, that can't be the idea. Um, I, I meant point takes knight, point takes knight, yeah, yeah. So I was playing it the wrong way around. I was like, what? Um, point takes knight, point takes knight. So now the queen would be hit. So you'd have to. And, and d4 is hanging. So, okay, trades queens. And now again, white to play. White gets to use the queen first. I somehow don't believe in it. Maybe d5 here or something. You don't believe in it for black? Yes. Yeah. I mean, white gets a little bit of initiative because he gets the queen first. So we'll s I want to play d5 here for white. Yeah. D5 looks interesting for sure. Although there are ideas of maybe knight d4 takes c2, and I'm not sure. Okay, so with this move, he's defending. Because if you play knight d4, then there is queen at a4 check. Uh, maybe there was knight at d4. Ah, uh, okay. And that's knight and c2. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm I, not sure black had enough, though. I'm not sure black had enough. Like, no, you're right. Uh, he takes e6, and I take c2, king d1. Yeah. Queen e1, king takes c2, knight d4, king d3. Well, I never see knights anyway. Maybe there was something. Yeah, I, I mean, I've missed the the queen check, and if you've only got one knight, it's much harder. So it's going to be hard, hard to defend c7. Well, you don't have to defend, but what else do you do? Goes for a counter attack on c2. So this is getting sharp. So it's kind of the opposite of the last game, which was very tense. <laughs> um, both sides not wanting to trade. He sort of tested. Let's see how the finisher does with no trades. And now he's testing. Let's see how the finisher does with high trades. So the lone wolf is suggesting knight takes c7 and takes the rook, and um, what Opoezen is saying is I think that's made, because knight takes pawn check, k 
king here, queen here, check. Uh, king takes knight or something, and then just knight here, and the bishop is actually cutting off the king from coming to b3. So it isn't. It, it does look very mateish. Yeah, it is mate. Okay, knight takes it two. Yeah. King d2, queen queen at e1. Yeah. That's... Either king d3 or king or king takes it two. That's knight before me. Yeah, that's that's what I saw as well. Yeah. So. So white defends and black castles queenside. Woohoo! And Opera in chat says now Tortine is safe and has the attack. Yes. Yes. Again, we are in some twelve team position. Well, he has. He still has the queen in hand. And, um, and in this case, he's not down material like he usually is when he gets this sort of match. But there's also nothing like obvious. Oh yes, no, there is something obvious. There's no, there, oh, there's trade on d4, because at the end of the trade on d4, there would be knight takes c2. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So which order do you do things in? Do you do you go knight takes c2 maybe first? Maybe queen at d1 is too passive. Hmm. I'm not sure what should have done. But maybe try to take a con c7, king d7, and now it's fancy to, to have the black king at the bottom state. Or, like you said, uh, go on d5 earlier, that seemed to be critical. To... Yes, I'd like, I'd like d5 then. Yeah, it shuts off that diagonal. Now I was thinking something like on c2 would, so I was thinking knight takes c2 might come immediately, but it doesn't, so he's, he's, he's oh, queen at g6. It's turned into a chess game. Yeah, with the, it says fork of these two key squares, g2 and c2. It's, it's funny, this is, this, is, this is hilarious actually, because it's um, a nested fork. You're forking two squares, and implicit in those two squares, you're threatening another fork. Isn't that hilarious? It's a fork of forks. There's something there who takes h7 now. So it takes this. What's the 12 team movement? Bishop at h1? At g2? No. no. Hmm. Oh, I see. He was just wasting blockers. That was smart, wasn't it? Okay, he has to do my g2. Ah, oh, g2. That's king g2. Goes king e2. So yeah, basically the bishop check was just a waste of blockers. It's so nifty. So twelve team, what does he want here? Twelve is looking for a way to sacrifice his queen. Just doesn't want to move it. He can just go for the queen h5 check if the queen takes b5. Just get two knights with the queen. Doesn't feel like the oh, he sacks the queen this way. Bishop takes knight. Now the threat is knight takes d4 check into mezzo before you take back any rook. And that's going to be a problem because. Yeah, yeah that's a problem because knight takes b5, queen h5 check. He just proved the idea, as you said. Oh, now there's a fork. Queen h5. Queen h5 check picks the knight. Yeah, he free knight. For um, so if he'd taken the queen, what was the move? Knight takes pawn and then just take back the rook? Or was there something stronger? Probably. Yeah. He just takes the pawn and then yeah. 
even the king, the king I actually had to go to e3. Um, that, that point, it's probably fair to stop calculating. Yes. So hi there, Lepa, Jamalo, and Burak Yarol. I'm actually commentating here with GSVC who, uh, from Paraguay. So on Paraguayan internet, isn't, isn't that right? Yes. That's a warning that I might disconnect at any point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's okay. So he, he wins the knight, but there's some counterattacks on his queen. Uh, yes, but his king is quite safe. If he wants to be practiced, he can just take on f3 and play e takes f6, just to tell of everything. He should be winning this game. With he does a really good job of... A lot of yeah, he does a really good job of exhausting Mixu's material. Like Mixu only has knights in hand, which aren't really useful. And time is going to be an issue now. They're both under 30 seconds and Mixu's down to 10. Yep, it's going to shift that knight. Um, um, I'm more, more concerned about White's position than White's time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> In Rook takes 7 not, not the at least half the threat of Rook A8. And, Sm and smother. Mm, it's kind of nasty. Okay. I guess king d7, right? That's my contact play, knight takes d5, king a8. Bishop covers and any... It just looks like contact play. Rook at a8, rook c8, I guess. Okay, so I missed a couple of moves, so he he doesn't want, okay. He, ma he managed to do something here. Yeah, he's not sure if it's something good, but here yeah, rook d7, rook takes d5. Yeah. Rook d7, ouch. Yes, and rook takes d5. Yeah. So come on, uh, eight seconds. Yeah. Oh, that, that. Not blocking, uh, looks six, uncomfortable. Knight c6 now. Knight c6 gets the queen. Oh yeah, you can't take it because it's the queen. This is such well, a... He would take it, rook takes before, knight takes before. And this, has been, this has been a really amazing game. I mean, I can't see any, any clear... Knight at, at h1, they were taking e1. Maybe he's getting in now. Knight at h1 has to be moved. Knight h1, I was thinking rook d2, but he's found knight h1, which... Yeah, okay. That forces rook at g2. Queen with check, oh my goodness, yeah. Because of the discovery. Wow. What a, what, a, what a game. I wonder if, yeah, I wonder if that was ever. So let's see. So after this, it's looking a little uncomfortable. Does he ever actually let go of his advantage? Rook at d7. Yeah, so rook at d7 is his one shot, as it were, in the whole game. And then missing rook d7, it's, it's like forced mate almost after that. So rook d7 was the, the one chance to really get back in. Maybe I need to turn this down. Sorry, sorry, Racing Kings King in the Discord voice chat. I have to turn you down because you're not muted right now. Um, oh yeah, rotates queen, discover check, very pretty. Yeah, rook d7, king here, rook takes knight. 
if if that had landed on the board, what a confusing position. Maybe at d7 it says. And white can either take that pawn directly. But yeah, very, very confusing game. <laughs> Just see the nice says, okay, wow, missed that one. <laughs> rook d7, rook takes d5 is critical indeed. Okay, well, so good games. Uh, so actually with that 2-0 victory, um, that takes the match. Um, this is not right. That was season. That was season five. Let's just load up season six. Um, let's see. It's loading up the Crazy House website to show you the standings. Um, season six pairings. So with that, twelve team takes a nine five lead. Uh, with twelve team against the lock, Zess. ZHS monsters. Don't at H6 me. We um, we have that, uh, one more match to look forward to. GSVC. Good luck in your match against King Switcher. That will be in the early hours of the morning for me, about 3 a.m. British time. Um, but that that match is lost because last night we saw FT029 take down PKR 5025, which put the match beyond reach. And Rapid variants. Wow. So that's a de demolition of the zigzag team. 11-3, thanks to that 1-1 draw with six on. You've just reaffirmed his, their team is. Uh, so in terms of the standings after three rounds, uh, that means that 12 team and uh, the Shaka Zulu that, uh, with rapid variants and 12 team, those two teams will be on two and, a half, two and a half match wins out of three rounds, and they'll face off in round four. So that's going to be, I think they're going to face off in round four. So that will be very, very interesting, the top. Um, and we, we had a two game point advantage before this, but it's now all level because they, they won 11 games this round when we won nine. So it's all, it's all completely level in both match wins and in game wins between the top two teams. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. Um, if you're interested to see more of these sorts of videos, commentary of top Crazy House matches, uh, check out uh, my YouTube as well as other random variants and other things, and even some standard chess and end games. And thanks GSVC for, uh, for joining me in the commentary. Okay, goodbye.